Saros. Today heads the education training program of the India Today group. And Saros is a very old friend of mine from the JNU days. She did her MA and MPhil from JNU in political game industry. And Saros has done her PhD from Geneva. She has been working on spatial projects especially relating to the students needing special facilities, physically challenged or otherwise. And that's why when I discussed this subject with her, she insisted that she would speak on a subject on inclusive education, a subject in which she wants to, to sensitize students of journalism so that they take up this subject in future in all their writings and also as citizens of this country. And I indeed welcome Sharos for coming here and I would like her to make a presentation initially for 30-40 minutes, whatever. And thereafter there will be a question and answer session. Please participate wholeheartedly in this discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Dadini. Um, good, up, good afternoon, everyone. It's a moment of pride and great pleasure to me to be able to look at the faces of people who are going to be leaders of a media in a country. Because right now, I think the need of the hour is to have people who are sensitive, people who are brave, people who are bold, people who will take up the causes. Um, you know, we tend to focus on those who make news. We tend to focus on the written famous. Vijay Malia gets arrested. Vijay Malia gets bailed. It's good news. But there, there is somebody who cannot stand up, but is beaten up because he cannot stand up. He cannot stand up. That's his disability. You have heard about that, I'm sure. There was this case about national anthem being sung in a in a in a movie theater, and one person was beaten up because he did not stand up. But nobody tried to find out why he could not stand up, because he could not. He did not have the strength in his legs to stand up. He was a wheelchair user. It was reported, but nobody knows about his name. Nobody knows about his background. Nobody knows what happened to him. Nobody knows about what transpired within him. How did he feel? And how did millions of others who have some form of disability or the other feel when such an incident happened? Is it going to happen to me next? Is it going to happen to everybody who is not able to perform according to the set norms, right? Who will speak up on their behalf? Right now, nobody is. Nobody is speaking. And I'm looking at this bunch of people sitting here with great hope that you will. Because when we talk about society, it's not just the mainstream that forms the society. It's also the people who are marginalized. And when we talk about marginalized, we talk about Dalits. We talk about poor. We talk about people in the uh, far flung areas who do not really, who are not recognized as part of Indian, Indian diaspora. When I come from Darjeeling, and I can tell you that when you come from Darjeeling, or from Manipur, or from Mizoram, or from Nagaland, 
people ask us whether we are Chinese. And when I start speaking in Hindi, oh, you can speak Hindi? That's the kind of reaction. Then I have to tell them, no, I am, I am of Nepalese origin, I am Papa, but I'm an Indian. And that's news to a lot of people. So we have many people in, in, within the Indian subcontinent, within the Indian um, borders, who are not even considered important enough or newsworthy. And that in that, I would say, people with disability form a major chunk. How many of you have actually interacted with anybody who has a disability? Just a show of hands. Okay, one, two, thank you, three. Can I just ask you? Yes, sure. So, who, who is it? Actually, we need to cut the name. We only hope we use some videos. Okay. So, we can use some Okay. And like what? Gestures, right, right. And what does your cousin do? Actually, she is married. Okay. I'm very happy to hear that. Uh, actually, she is a high key and with 10 cousins. Okay. Wonderful. Okay, wonderful. Um, thank you. Um, there was another hand at the back. Yes, please. Uh, there was this uh, transgender, uh -huh. 60 plus, okay. Abdul. Okay. And he had a gangrene. Uh -huh. Nobody was there to take care. He was lying on the road. And he, now he is getting treated in RFA. Wonderful. Yeah. There was a friend, Norm. Uh -huh. So, three of us, we taken the transgender to the hospital. Now that he's been treated over there and now being taken care by an NGO out there. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Gives you hope for the future. Yes. I'm like a new celebrity radio station today. I have been people and people that they can have in mind. So this time we are having interaction with uh, two, three people. Or if they have a very friend, they have to be so cousin. Thank you so much. Thank you. So when you think of disability, what is what is what kind of images come to your mind? They need help. They need help, okay. Anybody else? When you talk about disability, we, we talk about people with um, yeah. So, what what kind of images come to your mind? Yes. They need more. They need more special care. They need special care. Okay. All right. So, what kind of when you say disability, you can care. What is the um, you know lack of ability? What kind of abilities do they lack? Which one are you talking Okay. okay, all right. Anybody? Okay. Do you think of a person who is lame, who can't walk? Do you think of a person who has who is on a wheelchair? Yeah? Just, just show show your hands. Just go bold and just show your hands. How many of you think of people on wheelchair when you think of disability? One? Okay, thank you. How many of you think of people who cannot see when you think of disability? Who can't see, who've got visual impairment? Yeah? Yeah, I know I'm keeping you for a lunch, but don't take it out on me like this. Yeah? You've got to speak up. Otherwise, it's going to be very boring if I only speak. Okay, all right. So when we talk about disability, suppose you all know Tom Cruise? You do. How many of you know Tom Cruise? Boss, you don't know Tom Cruise? Emission impossible, Lekha? Lekha? Okay. 20 hands went up. Thank you. That's better than before. Tom Cruise has a disability. Do you know that? Yes? Who knows Tom Cruise has a disability? Sunaka. Sunaka. Acha. Kya hai ki Abhishek Bachchan ko bhi kuch disability hai? Yeah? Dyslexia. Dyslexia. Thank you. 
so apparently we can't uh, read. Right? Dyslexia is, you can't read, you have problem reading. So there are certain disabilities which are evident. Somebody who cannot walk or somebody who's walking around like this who is not able to see where he's going, you can make out he has a disability, he has a visual impairment. Somebody who can't hear, you know he's got a hearing impairment. But there are people who, lots of them, who have hidden disabilities. But there are processes in your brain that are not working. When you see something, when you pick up a newspaper, you see the words, the words make meaning to you. But there are lots of people to them, it's just swimming really words. Oh, yeah, yeah, that reminds me. Tare Zameen Par Dekhe Te? Yes. So Tare Zameen Par Kaun Se Disability Ki Baat Dekhe Dyslexia. Yeah. So this boy could not read. And then, so he could not read and therefore in the class he wasn't able to perform. And normally when you're not able to perform in a class, people just say you are stupid, you don't have intelligence and therefore many times you're chucked out of the school. It requires patience, it requires a lot of effort to make those children learn, to make them learn in the way they can. If you're not able to read books, maybe you can hear the words and then understand and learn the same thing that you learn by reading. All right? So there are lots of them who learn by doing. Even though you're, you're, you have visual impairment, you can't see, but by doing things, by touching and feeling and, and experimenting, you are actually able to get that information that you need to do. Some, some of us just do it by reading so easily. But for other people, you need to use other senses, your hearing, your touch, right, to, to get that information. So there are many people in the society, sometimes you may not even understand that they have a disability. Why is he or she behaving the way they do? There are all kinds of problems. Sometimes it is physical, which is evident. But sometimes it is neurological, which is not so evident. They never think brain at time. They look absolutely all right. And when you actually work with them, when you can train them, when you can make them able to look after themselves. Some of them, if the disability is severe, they do need special care, like you said, if they do need special care. But there are many, many people who can be made independent to a large extent, maybe not fully, but to a large extent, they, they can be made independent and able to take care of their own basic needs. That's an achievement, right? Not everybody can do a postdoc, or not everyone can do all the things, uh, you know, they get all the degrees. But all of us strive to do the best we can do. And for some of us, the benchmark is very high. For some of us, the benchmark is what others would consider low. But that's high enough for me. Right? So everybody strives to do the best. And therefore, there are people who may not be able to go to school or go to college or, or get degrees like everybody else does. But they become somebody in their own little eyes, they make their life meaningful and worthwhile. Right? So when we talk about disability and when we talk about people who have uh, huge issues or a lot, a lot of challenges they face every day just to meet the daily needs, basic needs of a daily life, if the society was a little more understanding, if the society was a little more accepting, many of these challenges would not have come or would can be reduced. Why am I saying this is because when you talk about disability, there are disability which is because of your physical condition, but there are lots of disabilities that come because of societal factors. So you're talking about transgender somebody with, who's, who's, um, who's got a different attitude to life, okay? But because he's different, there are so many of us who do not want to become friends with or do not want to have any association with them. So these are, there are a lot of biases that we have 
within ourselves, within the society, that creates barriers for people who have genuine problems. Am I getting across to you? Yeah. So if we are able to project who they are rather than what their disability is, if you can talk about the person who is there before you see what he cannot do, if you can actually write about people who are great achievers by their own standards, you may not have the same standard, but if they are, you can see that they are great achievers, that would be such a celebration of life in society. Yeah? So, if, um, I want to tell you that I worked with people who have mental retardation. Okay? I work with people who have um, who are able who are, who are very slow in processing information, who are very slow in remembering things. I, I worked with them. This was a sort of a project, an experiment we did with them for one year. And in that one year, the kind of progress that they made was phenomenal. That. You know, this was to do with logical thinking, analogical reasoning, when you, when you kind of make logical comparisons, right? So this was that project. And when you worked with them again and again and again, and made them understand that concept, they were able to solve puzzles which are pretty complicated. And so that just goes on to show one thing, that every person is capable of learning. Every person is capable of becoming better than what he is or she is. And if we can give every person that space and recognize the fight that they have, that the fight that they make in their lives, I think that would be quite something that would make a huge change in our society. So when we talk about education, do you know where these children study, those who have a problem with learning? They have their schools. They have their schools, okay, thank you. Yes? Special schools for them, okay. All right. Any special school that you can think of in your neighborhood, in, in anywhere you've seen? There's a uh, precise center for blind, deaf, and public chapter. Okay, yes. Okay, so that, that's been the tradition. For a long time, we didn't have anything. For a long time, people with disability, and when I'm talking about long time ago, I'm talking about a few centuries ago. There was nothing. People who were visually impaired were thrown in the prison. People who, were, who, were, uh, who had mental retardation were thrown in the prison along with thieves, criminals, murderers, because they were people who were not going to be uh, productive in the society. They were all, all of them were put in the same category. But slowly, I think it was during the British Raj, you know, the British times, that the, some of the missionaries started a blind school in Chennai. And then this school in Chandigarh also started. So slowly, this kind of special institutions started coming up. Now we have quite a few special institutions in Delhi, in Noida, in Gurgaon, in the NCR, and also all over India. But if you look at the number of people who need these services, the schools are not enough. They're not, they're not enough. Because you need trained people to run these places, and you need resources, and not many of them are being run by the government. Most of them are being run by NGOs or by private foundations. And the services that we are providing in the special schools just do not match the needs that we have in the society. So what is happening is that all over the world, everyone is saying, people who are, who are disability rights activists, they are saying that they, the people with disability also have a right to be part of the mainstream. They also have a right to be in the same schools as everybody else. Why should they be discriminated against 
If you look at the Constitution of India also, we the people of India, we start off, isn't it, the preamble. Nowhere it says we the able-bodied people of India. There's no discrimination there. So why are we making this discrimination? So the, the trend worldwide has been to put these people or to, to enroll these students also in the mainstream school. Now what happens when you enroll them in the mainstream school? That's what we talk about, inclusive education. Yeah. So when you put them in the mainstream school, the teachers need to be trained to be able to deal with their special needs. How do they learn? How do they hear? How do they understand? How do I get across my points to them? The teachers need to be aware of that. That's something I've been trying to do for last 10 years in Delhi, is to sensitize the mainstream teachers, to give them the, the tools, to give them that skills to be able to handle them. So the government says, according to the rules, according to the right to education, all children, all children, regardless of their age, their reg sorry, regardless of their gender, regardless of where they come from, regardless of their economic status, they all need to be in, taught in the same school, right? Right to, have you seen that, right to education? Have you looked at it? That's a legislation that we are very proud of. It got passed in 2009, and it got started uh, getting implement, implemented from 2010. But when the, although the rule, the, the law is beautiful, right to education, that everybody must have a right to education, quality education, must be treated with respect and everything, it's not actually filtering down to the ground. It's not happening in the many schools, right? There are some schools which are trying very, making very uh, valiant efforts to have this kind of inclusive education, but in majority of the schools, there are not enough resources. The situation in the government schools is you have trained people or special educators shared, one person shared among four schools or five schools. So even if they come to your school, they come for one day. If there is, if there are five or ten or more students, how many students will they be able to help in one day? It's actually, it's just on paper saying, do we have a special educator or help from a special educator? Yes, we do. It's a tick on the paper. What actually is getting done? What actually is happening? How impactful is the, is the intervention to the children who need these interventions? Very minimal. All right. So we need, we need the government to allocate more funds. We need the government to provide more for hiring specialists. You have special educators who've been trained to um, teach the, the children with disabilities in a special way. Right? There are special techniques in dealing with it. There are occupational therapists who look at the motor movements, fine motor movements. There are children who cannot write. There are children who cannot hold a pen. How do you give them that kind of strength and dexterity? There are, there are occupational therapists who will make hyperactive children jump on a trampoline and calm them down. There's so many ways that you can uh, help people with disability through occupational therapy, with physiotherapy, with speech therapy, with counseling. So there is a battery of people, battery of services that we can provide so that these children can be included in the school and can be taught or can be helped to learn. Right? But if the school, if the, the school does not have resources, if the school doesn't have funds, it's really not possible. So that's the situation, that's the ground reality right now. There are institutions, there are schools, where even the mainstream teachers are making effort. If there is, if there is a child with visual problem who, who is not able to read, the teacher actually reads out to him or gets another child to read out to him. Um, Nalini is not here, but in JNU, 
when we were students. We had a colleague with visual impairment. He couldn't, he couldn't read anything, he couldn't see anything, but he was a great singer and he was a great human being. And so we used to have people read it out to you. You, you get books which are uh, audio books, but you don't get all the textbooks as audio books. So there's, there used to be other students who would read it out to him. And he would make a recording so that he could listen to it again and again. He went on to do his PhD in political science from Cambridge University. He is now um, his editor in Hindu in Chennai. Right? So there are people who can be helped if you know how. If there are people, they know how to ask what they need. And there are people around who are sensitive and who can provide that kind of support. There are people with cerebral palsy. Cere cerebral palsy is a neurological um, problem by which your muscles or your limbs do not obey the kind of de demand that your, your, your brain is putting. So suppose I tell my hand I want to pick up my glass here. My hand will not obey that command. And so the hand can go all over or the hand is floppy or the hand is too stiff to be able to lift. Right? But my mind works absolutely fine. There are again techniques by which you can actually make people learn and do exams and get degrees and all that. And you have these kind of guys who are, a couple of boys have set up their own sort, computer firm and they work from home. All they can one person do is move with the mouse and he's able to control the computer and they actually manage to run a software company from home. There are so many achievers, there are so many people who have who have these successes which are not even celebrated, not even known. Not uh, the society doesn't give enough importance to understand and to be able to help. Right? So that's why I'm looking at you with a lot of hope that when you become leaders in your own fields, you would be able to look at somebody who has a disability with much more sympathy, much more understanding, and you will be able to write their stories, highlight their achievements. Okay? So what's happening in the schools? Let me give you something which is actually uh, straight out of our CBAC guidelines. Okay? The Central Board of uh, Secondary Education understands that there are many people who need extra help. So on the, in the rule book, they say, okay, if you are visually impaired, you can dictate your answers and somebody else will write it down for you. If you have dyslexia and you're not able to write it yourself, the CPS says you can have a scribe, that means you can have a writer. So obviously when you are dictating your answers to somebody, it, the process takes longer, right? So they give you extra hours to finish your paper. So if everybody is getting three hours, that person who has this special provision can take three and a half hours or four hours to complete the exam. If a person who cannot read or who cannot see, somebody is there to read out the question paper to them, not tell them the answers, they, they are also invigilated, but they can be helped to understand. Okay? There are people, you are not allowed to use computers in the exam, generally. But there are people who can type out their answers, they are allowed to use the laptop. Okay, so there are certain provisions How many of you know of NIOS, National Institute of Open Schooling? No? Two? Three? Four? Okay. There are some of you. What does NIOS do is it gives you five years to complete a course, a complete, a, a, you know, board. So for instance, if you have to do five exams, if you can just do one exam a year or one exam a semester, you can accumulate all your credits. And you actually, at the end of it, you get a degree. If you fail one exam, you can retake that exam within the five years and you can actually finish your 10th uh, exam, your 12th exam, 
and you can actually get a degree. And you have no idea what a boon it is for people with disability for whom learning five subjects together is a problem. But learning one subject at one time, it's easier to manage. And they use NIOS to complete their education and then go on to become, uh, you know, become actually very successful people. I have a student, or I had a student, now he's no longer my student, but he will always remain by my budget. He has learning disability, and he had a lot of issues writing the exam, but he finished the exam somehow. He finished, and not through NIOS, he finished his exams. Then he went on to do his hotel management, and he did his hotel management. He was able to, his parents sent him to Switzerland, to Montreux, where there's an institute, a very uh, famous institute of hotel management. He finished that. Recently, he sent me a picture of him as manager of Fairmont in Abu Dhabi. So proud of him. He's become somebody, somebody that he really wanted to be because he found that with support he was able to achieve his dream. There is some, there is another girl who did her BA uh, bachelor's with subjects like Bharatanatyam and history, and she did that, and she runs an NGO in uh, Arunachal. There are so many people, with common people like you and me, who have been able to overcome. These, they're, they're the challenges that they had. And with some support from the government, with some support from the schools, and with some support from the, the community around, they are able to do something. They are able to make some, some meaning out of their lives. And that's something that I beseech you, that you need to be able to provide, you need to, if, if you are able to provide that kind of support and sensitivity world will be a much better place to live in. Okay? So I think now I will stop, but I would like you to ask questions. Thank you. Yes. Dedication, a sense of commitment, and they do it. So there are good institutions, there are not so good institutions. It's very difficult to generalize. I mean, Joe Gandhi Sari's schools may as a little bit. Kafi schools may be hot at Chakambore. They are really empowering those children who are there, who are in those schools. But there are also some institutions where you are just doing. Just sticking, you know, in the Kam Bora Bora, the Kam Bora Bora. Non Kibasti special educator, and that's something that's happening in the government schools. In the government schools in Delhi region, as I said, four schools sharing one special educator is a joke. Because her bachiko, bachiki saar kam karna hota hai, jab. So, trust that takes time. And if you're just spending one hour a week, by the time you come in the next week or the, the week after, the child would have forgotten you. You never build that rapport, or you're not able, never able to build that rapport so that you can do something that could work with them. So, what is happening in Delhi government schools is not worthy of mention. 
There are the private schools, they are doing good work. But again, with private schools, it costs money. There are people who are able to spend money, parents who are able to spend money, and they are getting the services, which makes it even more lopsided. The, the balance becomes even more skewed because then only the rich get services and not the poor. So that's why I would really like, like to recommend the NGOs who are doing great work in this field who are talking about not only imparting them skills, but they're also talking about their rights and making them aware of their rights. Right? Does that answer your question? Please. Appointments after 
by few months. If you go to private uh, psychiatrists, sorry, psychologists, you, you can get it done faster. They cost, they cost money. And like I said, it is always um, a little unfortunate that the rich have all the privileges, the rich have all the access, and for the poor, we struggle.
Because of that hesitation, you hold back. And the other person, all the time, is only trying to make friends, only trying to find friends. We started a program um, in which children with disability were taken to a school where they were regular children and they became friends. And it was a program on Saturday where they would play together. So here is this kid on a wheelchair. Oh, let me ask you, how many of you think that people on wheelchair can play basketball? People on wheelchair can play basketball. How many of you know that or think that it's possible? Three hands went up, four hands went up. How many of you know or believe that people with visual impairment can play cricket? Two, three, four, five, six. Very good. More, more. We have, you do you know that we have champion cricket team? Yes. Yes, so we, we, there are people doing so well, right? So the the the, the, um, the best team in the world to play cricket, vision for cricket for vision impaired children, children or young adults, is the Indian team. The people on wheelchair also play basketball. You have leagues, you have tournaments between two groups that are that are both are on wheelchairs. And they wheel themselves from one end of the court to the other, and they're throwing baskets just like anybody else, just that instead of the legs, they're, they're moving on the wheels. Now, here was this kid talking about the, the incident where one child on wheelchair goes, and then there are other kids who are playing basketball. And this kid has also been throwing the ball, and he goes and scores. I had his mother crying on the side. And I said, Why are you crying? She says, the first time he's ever had some other person to play with besides me and my husband. We were the only people who played with him. No other child played with him. So <coughs> there are kids. There are just kids just like you and me and anybody else who want to make friends. But because of our biases, because of our hesitation, because of our lack of knowledge, because of our lack of exposure, we hesitate. We don't go forward. Right? And therefore, they find it even harder to come out of the mix. And then they are always the weirdos, the people who are out in the corner, people do the weird things, and they are not one of the boys. I think the biggest thing that we had, the biggest step the central government has taken, is to pass this uh, law, the persons with disability, equal opportunities for persons with disability. That law was passed in 95, and it was amended recently, last year, uh, 16, yeah. so last year. In December of 2016, it got amended, and therefore it's become more encompassing. It looks at all the other disabilities and says people of, who have these disabilities are also recognized as individuals who deserve equal opportunity, just like anybody else, and they should be given uh, opportunities to study, opportunities to work, opportunities to to marry or earn a livelihood, etc. So. You look at the quality of life and you say equal opportunities. That's that's the best thing that we got. Right? That's something that we can be proud of. Otherwise, till this bill was amended in last year in Delhi University, a person with learning disability in Delhi University was categorized as physically handicapped. Because there was no officially learning disability was not recognized. Right? But now with the, with the, the law becoming a broader place. So we have this. But what's happening 
like you said, there are many people who need these services and they don't have access to the facilities because the facilities don't exist. All the facilities do exist, but the facilities are far less than what we need. So there are many people um, in the, especially in the remote areas, who have no access. It is actually for us to come up with solutions. What we did um, years ago in, in, in the Spastic Society in Northern India, which is now called Adi, is that we had a, what is called a home management program. So you come with a child, okay, you come with a child who has a problem, and you don't have facilities to provide them with schooling and provide them with the training. But you teach the mother, you first look at the child, what are his needs, what are the immediate uh, needs or immediate intervention that's required. And you train the mother or the primary caregiver, whoever that is, you train them and you tell them, look, you go and do this at home. You do this for 15 days, then you come back again. Okay? And then after 15 days, you look at the child again and say, has he improved? Has he learned those skills? And then if he has, then you give the next 15 days program. So that way, each person, each special educator, each occupational therapist or a physiotherapist was able to see many more people. So that home management program was a great idea. Unfortunately, it doesn't happen. But that kind of community-based rehabilitation, where you are empowering the community members to become able, to become empowered to provide services. Because this mother, who has learned to do something for his child, her child, after, after a while she's able to provide that same service to the others as well. So that way you have more people working in the community. But these are things that we need to find solutions to. The government is not able to solve this problem. Where this is an area where the NGOs are playing a big role, but again, it's still a drop in the ocean. That's why I've been saying mainstream teachers need to be sensitized because we cannot have a special educator for every child who needs this service. We need to have the mainstream teachers who need to be trained in this. As a part of the teacher training itself, they need to be sensitized to the needs of special children so that they are able to look after them to a large extent in the classroom itself. Right? That's something that I've been advocating for a long time. And now with the, with the B in syllabus, there, there is a component when you understand what disabilities are. But it's not given, it's still an optional subject. It's not given the importance that it needs. जब 